My name is Jeremy Devins, and this is the Quiet Mind Astrology Podcast with the weekly horoscope for Monday, August 22nd, 2022. So it's always fun when we have those sort of numerology synchronicities today on the 22nd of 2022. But I don't put too much stock into that. It's just kind of fun when you see those patterns and synchronicities around you. So this week is now open enrollment for the Vedic Astrology Mentorship, the one time of year where you can start working with me directly to become a certified Vedic astrologer and learn everything I have to share 200 plus videos, four months of coaching and support, and then lifetime access. So that is all Going, it's all open right now, and I will be sharing some details coming up this week. But right now, if you want to check it out and learn more, the best way is to go to quietmindastrology.com slash seven steps and check out the free workshop I hosted last week. It was really awesome. We had over 300 plus people joining up and signing for, signing up and joining from around the world for Become Your Own Astrologer. This was a live training on how to take seven steps to become your own astrologer, whether you work with me or not. These are the actual things that I've found work the best after my 17 plus years of experience to be your own astrologer, to actually take all the stuff you're learning and apply it to yourself. And that starts this week with the transits and the things happening that can apply to you that I share every week on this podcast. So I'm going to talk about the three transits happening this week, including the really big one that's been happening for a while, but it's a pretty big impact of Uranus going retrograde in Aries and Barani Nakshatra. So as always, if you want to know how this affects you personally, have your free birth chart at quietmindastrology.com. Get your free birth chart there and look for the sign of Aries or the number one in your chart. That is where Uranus is going retrograde. It's been there for a while, but we'll be talking about that. And then Taurus is where Mars is going into Rohini Nakshatra this week, taking action in that area of your life. And then the new moon is in Leo in Maga Nakshatra, in the number five in your chart that area there's an opportunity for new possibilities new beginnings in that area of your chart this week so i'll just give you the dates right now starting this week on wednesday august 24th uranus goes retrograde in aries and barani nakshatra this happens every year for six months where uranus goes retrograde so it's a pretty significant time and it's very common that about half of the population has uranus retrograde in their birth chart And we'll talk about what that means in a moment. But then on Saturday, August 27th at 9.05 a.m. Central Time, Mars goes into Rohini Nakshatra. Mars has been in Taurus since August 10th. And I talked about that earlier this month on past episodes. Check those out. But we'll go into what that means in Rohini this week. And then on Saturday, August 27th, also the same day at 1.16 a.m. Central Time, the moon is a new moon in Leo in Maga Nakshatra. And new moons, always time for new beginnings, new intentions in this area of where you have leadership and confidence and authority. So we'll go into that a little bit more as well. Starting up with Uranus going retrograde in Aries. Now, this is a big deal, and I've got a lot of notes I'm going to be looking at. So I will be uh, posting this as a video on YouTube. If you follow me on YouTube, you'll see the video there. You'll see me looking down at my notes as I go through, because there's a lot to talk about with Uranus, what it means being retrograde. Because this is a, a very significant transit for the country of the United States, for the world, and for you personally in your own personal growth and revolutions that you're going through in your life. So one big thing to talk about here is when this started. So on June 27th, 2016 is when Uranus went into Aries and it stays there fully, uh, gets out on in March 2025. Uh, you could actually say March 19th, 2025 is when now Uranus gets out of that into Taurus. And when Uranus gets into Taurus, that will actually be a Uranus return for the United States. Now, what does Uranus represent? Well, with all these outer planets, one of the ways we can understand them is through what happens when they are discovered and what things are going on in the world at that time. And with Uranus, there were some interesting things. And they have to do also, they are interestingly related with what Uranus does when you look at it and observe it. So if you look at Uranus, it's tilted on its axis 98 degrees and it has rings. So it looks like a wheel spinning through space. Through 
so one of the things that it represents is wheel-like things, wheels like revolutions, like wheels take turns and revolutions. And what happened when Uranus was discovered was the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution. These are big, massive turning points in society in the world. And we are going through that, particularly in the U.S., we're going to have the Uranus return. So it'll be a big revolution and transformation of what the United States really is, especially once we get to that return point. In that seven-year period starting in 2025, we are moving towards that. Just like if you are in your Saturn return or moving towards a Saturn return, you feel this sense like things are about to change. There are big things on the horizon for like wherever that uh, Saturn return happens in your chart in that particular area. So for the United States, this is through the fifth house where Uranus is now and into the United States sixth house where it will be during the return in 2025. So right now, big transformations in media and communications and technology, like the kind of uh, multimedia things that we experience, like podcasts, like YouTube, like movies and television, all of these things have changed tremendously in recent years especially for me growing up in the 90s it was just everything was just very different back then and massive revolution of like what it means to be creating content or consuming content and our experience of having devices in our pockets now where there's just endless streams of information and content all the time so it's been a big revolution in that way and we're seeing that still continue to play out and it also represents things like wheels. So like when it was discovered, we had the invention of the spinning jenny, which you might not know what that is, but it's essentially a wheel that made it possible to weave more clothes and more textiles faster. And it's interesting that that was invented at that time because the word weave, this closest thing in ancient Sanskrit, where the source text of the Vedic astrology is, is tantra. And Tantra as a practice has grown massively in recent years and it's much more commonly known and practiced in all its different forms. Right? A lot of people hear that word Tantra and think about sexuality, but that's just one of the ways of expressing and practicing that because what Tantra means is to loom or weave. And it's about seeing the connection and weaving of the spirit and the divine into everything that we do and weaving it into everything we do. Similar to what the spinning Jenny did in the uh, previous revolutionary times of Uranus and Aries around the American Revolution and all that. So that was also Uranus being in Aries at that time. So we are coming back to that kind of energy right now. We see this sort of civil war kind of energy happening in the US. There's a lot of polarization and politicization of everything. And that is part of this kind of energy as well, similar to what was happening back then in uh, like 1764 to 1773, like that revolutionary kind of time. And we are approaching what many call the next great industrial revolution. So the industrial revolution was happening back then. And there's a lot of things that have been coming out in recent years, this idea that we're going into the next great industrial revolution, which means Things are more automated. There's less requirement for us to be working and to be actually doing the labor to create the results that we have. More drones, more computers, more self-checkout, automated checkout things. The thing, anything you want can be pretty much delivered to you overnight now. And the, the human element is being removed from a lot of these labor kind of tasks. And that human element can be directed towards actually working together in more emotional things, more mental things, less physical manual labor kind of things. There's now like electronic servers at restaurants, right? So everything is moving more and more in this direction. And we are in that phase of moving that way where we see like massive developments in robot technology and computer technology and microchips, really fast, phenomenal, amazing things happening in the world. And it also represents wheels like transportation. So we've seen, of course, massive growth in transportation since the last time Uranus was here in the 1700s. But now we're seeing things like the boring company from Elon Musk, like we're removing transportation underground into tunnels or like SpaceX and Blue Origin where we're moving transportation into space. So new revolutions in how we move through space and transport ourselves through space. And we've seen 
so many big like political things happen, like the Brexit, uh, the 2020 protests and all this, like big nationalist leaders and movements like Donald Trump and Modi and India. So this big revolutionary kind of energy has been really happening. And all that to say, like, what's that mean for you personally? So you want to look where Aries is in your chart, and that's where you're going through your own personal revolution and transformation. Since June 27, 2016 through March 2025, March 19th, 2025, Uranus will move into Taurus on June 1st, 2024, but then it will retrograde, then it will finally be moving fully forward in March 25. So look to Aries in your chart. Where are you now going more inward as Uranus goes retrograde this week in Barani Nakshatra? Barani represents birth and death and transformation in all forms. And we've seen things like the reversal of the Roe v. Wade decision affecting abortions for, uh, for all American women. And that's been a massive major issue in pol political things and all that and it has to do with birth and death and life and that's bar any kind of issues specifically within Aries uh, so as you look to wherever Aries is in your chart there are opportunities for rebirths opportunities for letting go of things that are no longer serving you opportunity for beginning new things and in Aries in general not just Barani but in Aries a time for starting a time for initiating and beginning things and, and for me personally and this will apply to anybody who has Virgo rising in your chart and I've seen this in so many other Virgo risings too but you're going into this revolution about the transformational work that you're doing in your life right this is very specific to Virgo risings and just sharing my experience too like I started this podcast during that time and I've grown my astrology teachings and practice and business during that time and it's just sort of organically happened I didn't really try to do that or set out to do it it's sort of tuning into my intuition allowing it to unfold so I encourage you to do the same of tuning into where are you intuitively being called and driven in your life to create something so as always I talk about positive negative and neutral expressions of every transit just like every atom in your cell is a proton, electron, and neutron, every choice we make can have a positive, negative, or neutral perspective driving it and possible outcome. So some of the positive, favorable outcomes of this Uranus and Aries time, and you want to sort of filter this through the house that it's in in your chart, is, of course, like a revolution kind of things. Things, were, things change. Things need to change, and they are, now they are changing. Things can move very fast, sometimes erratically, sometimes too fast, but there can be a lot of fast growth, just like I've seen in my astrology work over the past several years. Uh, there's a lot of pioneering energy for you, wherever this is in your chart. A lot of ability to take initiative and finally start something. There's a daring kind of energy, an adventurous energy. This is good for mechanical and technical inventions. Now that might not apply to you, but improving your use of technology or the technical things around you. Exploring, trailblazing, starting new things, going into new areas that aren't as well developed or known to other people. So you might have this like in your sixth house where Aries is in your sixth house. Uranus is there going retrograde now, but this might be a time where you've had major breakthroughs in your health or understanding of health. And you've explored a lot of different things health-wise, like trying different diets or different exercise programs, things like that. On the more neutral level, this can mean like just independence, wanting to experience more uh, yourself of who you are and feel the sense of like freedom and choice and exploration in your life. And on the negative side, this could be wars and civil unrest and people being too self-interested and selfish and too much of the Aries energy. This, this revolution is like all about me. Uh, and we see wars, of course, are generally happening all the time to some degree, uh, more or less covered by the news. But we have that happening now, of course, as well. And major just shifts in the whole political climate over the past several years in all countries and potentially moving more in a new world order direction. Uh, like the recent book about that came out, Ray Dalio, I've talked about of where countries like China are rising into greater significance and countries like the U.S. are having more and more issues and things like that. So there's 
positive, negative, and neutral with every transit on a personal level, not being at war with yourself, finding where you are being really pulled and swayed by these external things that we really can't control or influence a whole lot unless you are directly making those decisions or in a, a role of influence in that way. Uh, there can be this tendency to focus on external just as human nature, like we focus on things sometimes we can't control and it has us feel disempowered and weak and just frustrated. And meanwhile, we're not addressing the things that we can influence and control, like how we help others or how we share our gifts with the world or do our work in some way or our own practices, right? It always comes back to personal choice and responsibility of how you want to respond to all these external factors, how you want to use your influence that you do have to create the world that you would like to create. And we always have that choice. And again, the U.S. is going through this transit over its fifth house, affecting all these areas I've talked about, like speculative currencies, like cryptocurrency and uh, speculative gains like that, and the economy kind of issues. That's other stuff tied in with that I've mentioned before. But this is a time to really evaluate, go within, as Uranus is now retrograde, of what transformations have you gone through in your life that have served you, what is feeling like it is ready to transform in your personal life, and the area of your life, the house that it's in, and what kind of revolutions and transformations would you like to create in your life? What is ready to change? Where is the wheel of time of your life moving towards, and how can you work with that rather than against it so anytime we're having a transit it's like the universe is going in a direction and we can work with it or against it just like with the transit of the moon the tides go in and tides go out and you can work with that or against it you can move your setup on the beach like i just experienced this the other day of course uh being at the beach and you, oh you set up close to the shore and then the tides start coming in and before you know it your whole setup is underwater if you don't respond to the movement of the planets, right? So we can observe the movement of the planets and respond to it and work with it rather than against it and not end up underwater, literally with the moon or more metaphorically with these outer planets that have a more generational, more uh, far reaching kind of influence that's not as direct as the moon, which is so close to us. So that's Uranus retrograde in Aries. And now on Saturday, Mars into Rohini, quite a positive place to be so doing things actions that help bring more beauty into your life actions that feel like luxury to you like things that you like to do that feel nourishing and like sort of interesting and fun and uh, like with the kind of adventurous energy for example with this mars taurus stuff all this stuff put together this week uh, I'm planning to go on a fun little day trip this weekend and go into some beautiful places in nature I haven't been yet in the area I live now. So that'll be really cool. That's a fun example of kind of working with this. And of course, you look where Taurus is in your chart in that area of your life. What ne what do you feel like you need to take action on and things to start and sort of do and check off boxes, a little more action-oriented, yang-oriented with this energy. And also that's the new moon that day in MAGA, which supports that. So taking new actions on things that light you up. And that's why I've created the mentorship program to be available during this time, this one time a year where I open enrollment. Uh, so if this is something that does light you up, learning astrology, then you can join the mentorship now. I'll have more details on that later this week. Uh, but right now you can check out quietmindastrology.com slash seven steps and get the free workshop and learn all about it there and then how you can be your own astrologer if you want to be. So with this new moon in MAGA, it's an opportunity for new beginnings in your relationships, in your ancestry, new beginnings in how you are showing up in your life and leading in your life, whether you're a parent, whether you're just an employee and you're not in any role or title of leadership, you are still influencing others, the, the people you serve, the people around you. We always have some level of influence just by how we are and how we show up. So we have a chance to take a new perspective of that now with the new moon in MAGA here. So that's a look at this week. And then next week, we'll be talking a lot about the Leo stuff going on. So Sun and Venus and Leo. We've got this new moon in Leo this week. So a lot of that Leo energy going into next week. 
and then we'll talk about the monthly horoscope after that. So this is the limited time of the year when the Vedic Astrology Mentorship is open for enrollment, then it'll be closed for about a whole year again. So if you've been thinking about learning about astrology and going deeper into your studies, this is the time to do it. And with all this Leo initiative kind of energy right now, it seems like the perfect time to start something, especially more spiritually inclined, more tied to understanding yourself better and who you are and how you show up in your world. Uh, astrology is one of the most powerful, potent tools I've ever encountered to do that. I love it. That's why I share it here every week. So if you're enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to leave a review, share it with a friend, and check out that free training if you haven't already, quietmindastrology.com slash seven steps. All right. Thank you for listening and have a great week.